Standing here in Tupple's wool shed, and the bell's just been rung, and Stan Artridge is next to me as the shearing of the Rams reenactment is starting to take place. And, and what are they doing at the moment, Stan? Well, they're just pulling those Rams out, and uh, they usually start on the belly, but I think they've had the belly taken off these because of the burr, which blunts the gear. So I think that's the story. But so I'll they're making it easier for them? Yes, a little bit easier. That Blade shearing is probably a real lost art form. When did it start to go out in shearing? Was it around 100 years ago? Oh, probably, yeah. When machines came in, which was a bit over 100 years ago, the blades have dribbled out. But some likes of New Zealand shear a lot with the blades because of the weather. We shear a lot of stud sheep here with blades. It gets a little bit better tip on the wool, makes the sheep look better. Yeah, these sheep have had the bellies taken off them. Yep, the bellies are taken off. So how how long will it take these guys to shear these rams then, oh, do you think? Well, they, we usually shear these rams in five minutes, I suppose, with, like, these aren't really stud rams, they just flock rams. Yep. Uh, sometimes you take 20 minutes to shear a flock ram, a stud ram, with uh, with machines. These blades are probably shear in five minutes. Five minutes with the blades? Yeah, with the blades, I would imagine. Some of these blokes aren't... They haven't shorn with blades for maybe 10 years and there's a few stud managers or stud owners that are, that are shearing with the blades and, uh, you know, they clean up a few of their own sheep with the blades and for shows and makes them look nice. What are they doing now? The sheep are all on their side. What bit do you Mostly go for? they start on the back leg, but not necessarily. As some countries in the world, they start on the neck or anywhere else. Yeah, they, they do the neck and the shoulder next. It's not not like the machines, they can shear these sheep anywhere, they're not sort of tied to a down tube, so if the sheep struggles they just sort of walk around the sheep. Are rams hard to shear? Have they got yeah. a bit more muscle? Yeah, they're harder to shear, they're heavy, they lean against you and they tend to kick. They've got, well these sheep have got horns which are hard to get around. Blades are really good for the shearing under the horns, whereas machines get a bit tied up. Uh, they're wrinklier, you know, they're males and yeah. And this is all in, we're watching the reenactment of Tom Roberts's famous painting. What do you think that painting means to the shearing community? Well, brings tears to your eyes, like I've got. Bit stupid, but that's the way it is. It is just an amazing sight. When you look down this shed at the moment, there's 72 men leaning over their sheep, shearing away. There's a huge crowd in here as everyone watches, stands next to me, and, and as you just said, it brings tears to your eyes. It is just an amazing sight. And, and Stan, when did you start your career in the shearing well, industry? It was machine shearing. I started in 1947. I turned 16 in September, and I started in March crutching sheep. So I wasn't 16, and it's all I ever wanted to do, and I probably achieved a few things. Yeah. So you look now, and, and this is the first time in your life you've seen anything like this. Yeah, I've never been in a shed with so many stands. I've shorn in 20 stands, and I've taught in 12s and all sorts, but never as many as this. So this is literally almost four times bigger than, than what you're used oh, to. Yeah, it's amazing. If you think if you had 70 shearers here, and how much wool would come off in five minutes... I think in the olden times the, the shearers used to shear less than 100 a day and I think they might have been limited to about 90 or something. I'm not too sure on that, but maybe. There's this shearer in front of us on Stand 19. That's a traditional way It's the old shearers used to shear. You'll see exactly the same photo on that shearing of the rams. Why is that so traditional? Describe how he's standing. Yeah, well, the sheep's lean, the shoulder's nice and big and open, and he shears around the sheep, whereas we shear straight up the sheep with machines. Is it tough to do? You said they used to do 90 with the blades a, a day around about. I'd imagine you'd be pretty tired at the end of all of that. Well, I think anyone that does any work's always tired at the end of a day. It doesn't matter what you're doing. We get used to this sort of work. Sure, it's tired, but you've got to earn a living, so you just keep going. I was speaking to a shearer before. He was trying to tell me it was all about how, where your feet are when you're shearing. Why is that important? Oh, it's just like dancing. Pretty hard to dance with a partner <laughs> and the sheep's a partner. Yep. 
It's very easy if you're in step with, with your partner to get around the difficult parts of the sheep. Yeah, that's very true. It's your foot movement and letting the sheep relax and lean back against you. They call this the long blow. Well, it's only a short blow, really, because <laughs> he's shortened right around the sheep. And and, sorry, now he's just going straight up the back. Yeah. There's very th a lot of similar things. The best way to shear sheep with machines is very similar to what these people do. That's a very good way of shearing a sheep with machines. It's all with your thumb. You press down with your thumb and not up with your fingers. It's, it's very much good shearers use the same principle with machines. And is it a dying art form, blade shearing, or do you think because it gets used on stud rams a lot, it'll always live in some form? I think it'll always live, yeah. There's a, there's a reason why you do it. You, you leave about three-quarters of an inch of wool all over the sheep, and the blades cut it very cleanly, a lot more cleanly than uh, machines. And there's 7,000 sheep here today that are, are going to get done over the next two days. How long would it normally take a shearing team to get through that many? Well, it depends how many you had, but, you know, most people shear of 200 a day these times. Yep. Whereas, you know, I worked for many years before I saw a man shear 200. And now we're, uh, we're getting to the stage where some of the fleeces are, are starting to come through. What happens uh, well, once they come on to here where, where all the tables are? There's Johnny Dallow. He's finished his sheep. He's probably the fastest shearer in the shed. There he goes. He's the Australian blade shearing champion, and he's off to Wales. And they're throwing his fleece on the on the table right now. So it's the first fleece on the table. So there it goes. People are running around pulling little bits of wool off the outside. What's yeah, happening? We're taking there? the inferior pieces of wool off and we call that skirting. It'll go up to the wool classer and if there's anything needs a fine tune, he'll do that up the other end. So all the skirt bits are thrown into a bin. What happens to that stuff? Well it's called pieces or broken. And it depending on the quality of it, if it's got burr in it like some of these have got, not that these sheep have enough burr to carbonise, but if it, if it needs carbonising they would to make it nice and clean and it's still suitable for dress, suit lengths and everything. It's about 21 micron wool. And so is the wool good quality off a ram compared to say a, a weather? Well, it or? should be the best quality because genetically we want it the best. Yeah. yeah. So then the wool comes up towards the back of this room. As we walk up there, there's this sort of piles of wool being put in front of a group of different fellas who are all looking at it. What, what happens here? Well, it's what we call class. This is the chief wool class of Paul McCormick. He just gets hold of the wool and has a look at it and he gives it a strength test, gives it a flick between the fingers, that sound, and he'll tell the, the boy which bin he wants to put it in. We've got it up here, 3 a.m., 3 a.m., 3 a.m. Well, one, two, three. Uh, let's have a look. If the wool's a bit discoloured, it will go in a more of an inferior bin. We test it for tensile strength, not with a machine, but we give it a flick with our fingers. Yep. And if it tests 40 newtons, it's more valuable than if it tested 29. Okay. And so it goes into a, a better bin. Yeah, that's right. There's some very old looking machinery, very new looking machinery right next to each other here and this is obviously where the wool's pressed into bales. This was one of the traditionally the finest wool press you could get. It's a, it's a ferrier and it's a double box ferrier. You fill both boxes up. Some presses used to tramp the boxes but so that you get a bit more wool in. In the olden days the bales used to weigh about 300 weight, 300 and 336 uh, pound. Today they're about 400 and 400 pound, but they're pressed with a, you know, a hydraulic electric presses. So that's what's going on behind us. Yeah. They keep putting wool in and pressing the handle, and uh, comes down. And so now the the wool's getting taken to the back of the shed up here. We'll wander around here. That's really the finish of the process in the wool shed. Yeah. Next, it's trucked out to the either direct to the mills or. So, but every bale gets an individual number. They do. They get an. It's all recorded, as you can see there. North Tupple reenactment, and the wool class of stencils on it. The description of the wool.